So today we're just going to look at the full steps of growing a crop of spring barley. Um, the first step is ploughing, just to bring up some fresh soil to work with for the rest of the processes. Um, it's also a method of indirect control of some various weeds and um, pests. We looked at black grass, for example, in England. They often use ploughing as a way of uh, controlling um, weed and disease uh, problems. Uh, next, we always look at a soil test, don't forget. And the first thing we look at in the soil test is the pH. So our typical soil test in Ireland looks at pH and uh, your P and K indexes. So this land was a bit low on, um, the pH was a bit low. So we've applied some lime to the land here. Uh, this is also a bit of a, a method of indirect control. Don't forget, for example, rushes like to grow in land that is um, low pH. So by spreading lime, you're increasing the pH of the soil um stopping the likes of rushes from growing but also uh barley we know needs a ph of above six to grow so that's why incorporating lime into this soil was essential in this crop to get the crop to grow um this is ground lime which is spread with a proper lime spreader you can get granulated lime as well if you didn't have a proper lime spreader you can spread granulated lime with a fertilizer spreader so the next step is we're just going to incorporate in the lime and break up any big clods of soil using a, a harrow. So we're just using a disc harrow in the video here. Uh, we can see the harrow is just running over the soil, breaking up the clods into smaller pieces. Uh, when the clods are broken into smaller pieces, it increases the surface area and allows the soil to dry out more. So the drier soil is, uh, the easier it is to work so um it'll be easier to till as well you'll be able to get your seed in that bit nicer rather than trying to work with wet or muddy soil so we can see here we're just doing the headlands um headlands are always done last as well i suppose just to take out any tracks that you might have put in the field while you're discarrowing the rest of it or any kind of harrow at all just it just needs a rub or something just to kind of break up the the clods of clay or the clods of soil um that you're in the land you're working with. So the next step here is rolling pre-plowing. Now I don't have it included in the video, but we also are pre-sowing, sorry, actually. Uh, we also roll, roll uh, post-sowing as well, but I don't have that in this video, but just to include that we do roll after sowing also. By rolling before sowing, we're getting a firm seed bed. Uh, we're taking out any kind of air pockets that might be in the soil. And um, also this is a paddle roller, so it's leveling the so soil surface as well. It's pulling clay with it and uh, leveling off the surface of the soil and uh, when you're rolling after uh, sowing you're getting better soil seed contact and stopping birds maybe having access to this to the seed and uh, you could also be killing slugs or leather jackets so it's another method of indirect control uh, this bit of land was very low in uh, p and k it was index one for both so i was getting five bags of 10 a 25 be an expensive uh, process this year with the price of fertilizer but that's what this land needed to grow a crop of barley so that's what it got next we're sowing a crop of barley here so don't forget the first thing you think of when you're sowing is your uh, thousand grain weight you have to do your calculation there the equation we've often looked at to find your sowing rate and your variety used um it could be different as well so you have to consider your variety as well for disease or anything like that as well uh resistance to lodging anything kind of like that don't forget we'll always be looking at them things for uh picking your varieties and then your thousand grain weight is needed for your sowing uh to calculate your sowing rate um this is just your typical sowing outfit here it's a press at the front again just firm up the side a bit more and one pass at the back which is just a, a harrow again a pto driven harrow with a hopper in the back full of seed and the seed goes in the ground now after your 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 crop is planted you have to look at the crop as it's growing so here we can see some slug damage so you just keep an eye on the crop for disease you can also see on them uh, leaves there there is some examples of them leaves in the left there's some rhincosporium and brown rust uh, brown rust there kind of showing the brown specks so we know we have to treat it for disease so here I'm just looking, I'm using a fungicide, don't forget fungicides used for disease, herbicides for controlling weeds and insecticides for controlling insects. So this is just your typical example of a fungicide and we're going to apply this using a sprayer which is direct control. So this is direct control. 
So again, it just goes into the sprayer here, into the induction hopper, um, slowly apply it there, mixes up just like any of the chemical um, reactions we do in a classroom or anything in chemistry, this is how it's done. So next, you're in the field, you're applying the spray, just a gentle mist down on top of the plants. Uh, that was a leverage that was in the in the crop, so we decided to pull them out. But that's how you spray it anyway. Just apply it as a thin mist. It might need to be sprayed two or three times, depending on disease pressure, whether everything like that comes into into a uh, into play of whether you'll need to actually spray the crop or not. So finally, the last step here is your crop is now ripe. Uh, this is one of the fields here. The crop is fully fit, so we know when barley is fit, the grain will be hard, the heads will be turned down. We're looking for a moisture below 20% to reach our base payment. And a machine then called a combine harvester will then cut the barley crop. So the barley crop is being harvested here at the moment. Um, you'll need a trailer there also to store the grain. Uh, combines can store a certain amount of grain, but they can only store it for so long. Uh, the trailers will then um, take the remaining uh, grain and they'll bring it to either uh, your merchant, which you'll be selling your barley to, or your um, if you're storing it at home in your own farm, it can be stored there. And don't forget, you'll either be drying the barley then or treating it with acid to store it um, for your animals. If it is going, of course, for animal feed, because we all know that uh, barley in Ireland either goes for animal feed or it can be used in the uh, brewing business as malting barley, so for beer production. So this barley here is just feed barley uh, for, for animal feed and it goes to a mill and just gets milled down into different feed rations for feeding barley, or for feeding livestock, sorry. And we can see here at the back of the combine, the straw has fallen out uh, at the back, so we know it's going to be baled. Um, the the straw is then sold for bedding or used for bedding and um, if you were in the new straw incorporation scheme which we know is uh, more sustainable we're putting carbon back into the soil we're putting nutrients back into the soil by chopping straw but uh, if we were in that scheme we might be chopping the straw in the case in that case uh, we would the chopper be on and the swords of straw which you see there wouldn't um wouldn't be there we'd be chopping it into fine kind of very short material and spreading it across the field the chopper is on the back of the combine that's how you would do it if you were opting for some measure like that so that's the end of the video